Hey, it's Mr. Lunesky. Uh, section 3 is actually something that we uh, taught in class. So really, uh, this video here is just to either refresh you if you kind of needed to hear the lecture a second time, or maybe if you were absent the day that we went over it in class. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of the notes, but just a little bit here and there just to kind of refresh you on what we talked about. Um, okay, so uh, when solving for a right triangle, um, that basically means you're solving for all the missing parts. Um, solving for all the things that are gone, the angles, the sides. So if a problem ever just says solve the right triangle, that's sort of what you're doing. Um, there are two types of problems that we can see with that. So keep in mind, we're always dealing with a right angle. So each triangle has a right angle. So then you're going to be given two other things. So we're always given a right angle, and then in this problem, we're given one angle and one side. And then in this problem, we're given two sides and no angles besides the right angle. Um, so the, each of these types of scenarios sort of have their own different approaches on how you would actually solve them. Um, so whenever it comes to uh, finding the angle, the angle's really easy. Just remember 180 degrees. And then to find the sides, so we have to find two sides, that's when we are going to use trig ratios. Um, so to find this missing angle here, angle P, uh, just subtract from 180. 180 minus 90 minus 37, uh, that gives you that this is 53 degrees. So OK, we solve for that. So now we also need to solve for QR. And we also need to solve for PQ. If it helps you to put variables in there, go ahead and put variables in there. I'll do that. Um, so let's use this as our reference angle. And so now that makes this opposite. This is adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. And so based on what we talked about last class, we're going to use our trig ratios to help us solve for these two um, missing sides. So solving for x, I would do adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be cosine. Um, of 37 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 22. And then type all this into the calculator exactly as I have it written. Uh, and that gives me that x is equal to 17.6. So we can say qr equals 17.6. Um, and then to solve for PQ, same thing. We can use our reference angle of 37 and do opposite over hypotenuse. Um, opposite over hypotenuse is sine of 37 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, multiply again, both sides by 22. Uh, type that into the calculator again exactly as you see it, and you get 13.2. So we've solved the triangle. We solved for all the missing pieces. Um, over here, when we have two sides, we need to find the third side. And then we need to find the missing angles. So I'm going to call it x, y, and z. Um, to find the third side, so I'll just say uh, missing side, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just start there, shall we? Um, so this is the hypotenuse. So we can say that 28 uh, squared is equal to x squared plus 19 squared. Um, I, and then when I go through and I solve that out, you end up getting that x is equal to 3 square roots of 47. So again, just using Pythagorean theorem there. Uh, I'm going to try to make the video a little shorter, I guess. Um, let's just say we wanted to solve for angle y now. So we're going to call angle y our reference angle. So from our reference angle, um, when we have this scenario of two sides, we have to um, use um, the inverse trig. That's how I'll write it. Um, so if this is my reference angle, this would be opposite. This is still the hypotenuse, so I have those two numbers. So for that, opposite and hypotenuse, I would say the sine um, inverse. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Um, I would say that the sine of y is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And again, remember, to undo sine, we have to do the inverse sine from both sides. 
So then I get y equals sine inverse 19 over 28, which when I solve that out um, gives you about 42.7. So you only have to do that trig inverse for one of the angles. Now that I know this angle here is 42.7, now I can just subtract from 180. And so then to solve for z, we would do 180 minus 90 minus 42.7, uh, and that gives me 47.3. Okay. Um, then we looked at some word problems in class. Uh, there are two types of vocab -y type words that you're going to hear in these word problems. Angle of elevation and angle of depression. And the angle of elevation is when you um, look up at something. And an angle of depression is when you look down at something. Um, these also can be transformed into angle of elevations using alternate interior angle theorem. Because in both situations, we're going to have parallel lines, which is going to be our ground, and then it's called our line of sight. You'll see that in a moment. Um, okay, so we, in our first example, it has that the string of a kite is 120 meters long and makes an angle of elevation um, with the sand and the beach. What is the height of the kite? So the string of the kite is 120. So if you've ever flown a kite, uh, you know it says that it meets at the sand, so... It's meeting at the sand, and let's say that here's our little kite. And let's say Mr. Dolman's flying our Rockridge kite here. Rockridge. Um, okay, so flying the kite, so the string of the kite. When you fly a kite, it doesn't go straight up in the air like this. That doesn't make sense the kite string is sort of at an angle. So again, you need to think realistically of what does this look like. So I'm telling you that the string of the kite is 120. And then it says that it makes an angle of elevation. So if I was on the sand and looking up at the kite, that the angle of elevation here would be 70 degrees. Whoops. And now I want to know how high is the kite. I want to solve for this. Um, and so from this, that's where I'm going to now use trig ratios. So this is my reference angle. That makes this opposite, this hypotenuse. So what uses opposite hypotenuse? That is so. So sine of 70 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by sine of 70. Uh, when I pop that into my calculator, you get about 112.7 meters. So that's how high off the ground the kite is. Next problem, it says, from a 60-foot observational tower on the coast, uh, the Coast Guard officer sights a boat in a difficult time. The angle of depression um, of the boat is three degrees. How far is the boat from the shoreline? So the question is, how far is the boat from the shoreline? This is what we are solving for. What else do we know? We know that the observation tower is 60 feet tall. So that's 60 feet. So here's our right angle. So now when I connect this and it says that the um, angle of depression is 3 degrees. That means Mr. Dulman up here, when he's looking out, if he looked out straight, this is called the line of sight. When I look down, I create this angle here, which is my angle of depression. These two lines, the line of sight and the ground, are always parallel. So I can say that the angle of depression is the same angle that if I were down here on the boat looking up at Mr. Dulman, that we would have the same angle. His angle of depression is my angle of elevation. So we're told that that's 3 degrees, therefore this down here is 3 degrees. So now based on this figure, what do I have? I have my angle, I have the opposite, and then I'm solving for the adjacent. So now when I set this one up, it would be tangent of 3 is equal to 60 over x. This is one of those sneaky ones that when the variable's in the denominator, you can just switch them around. 
kind of makes it a little bit easier. And then when I put that into my calculator, I get 1,144.9 feet away. All right, and I'll do one last problem with you, and then I'll call it quits here. Um, it says that a 20-foot ladder is leaning against a wall. The base of the ladder is 3 feet from the wall. What angle does the ladder make with the ground? So, uh, here's my ground. Here's the wall. We know that the ladder is uh, 20 feet. And we know that the base of the ladder is 3 feet from the wall. And we want to know this angle right here. So this is my reference angle. This would be opposite the wall. The ladder is the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent. So keep in mind, when I'm solving for the angle, you're going to use the inverse trig functions. Or I'm sorry, trig ratios. Um, so cosine of x is equal to 3 over 20. To undo cosine, I need to do inverse cosine. And when I put that into my calculator, I get about 81.4 degrees. All right, that is your little refresher on applications. Thanks for watching.